best advice for founders, private companies in this turmoil? What's your best advice, fam? You're a founder, you got, I don't know, 18 months of runway right now, you're going into this, you know, slush, and you want to know what should I do? What should I do? I think Paul Graham's advice makes the most sense here, you need to focus on being default alive. Um, Define what that is just for people. Who don't yeah, know. so you know, Paul Graham wrote this great essay, uh, as part of what he's a founder of Y Combinator. And, you know, he has this very simple, you know, framework of looking at companies, which is your default dead or your default alive. And when you're losing money, as a company, and you're burning enormous amounts of cash, you're default dead. Now, if you're growing fast enough, default dead is a great strategy for value creation. But at some point, everybody around you will expect you to be default alive. And what that means is that the cost of what you do are less than the revenues you bring in when the result are profits. And even then, that's not good enough. I don't know if you guys saw, but you know, if you look inside of big tech, I was shocked to find out that, you know, for example, you know, companies like Microsoft specifically and Apple, you know, these guys trade at huge forward multiples, right, for enormous profitability. But companies like Facebook and Google for the same level of profitability, you know, trade almost a third less in terms of multiple. So even when you're that good, it's not good enough to be default alive. That's how hard this game is over very long periods of time. And so when you have a moment to really understand how to be default alive, and you don't take it, I think it's a huge disservice because we don't do enough of that kind of coaching that really inf inflicts that kind of discipline and expectation setting. I remember I, ha I have a large climate investment. It's actually the single largest investment I've ever done. And so I sweat the details pretty significantly. And, you know, I was with the team in, uh, uh, in November, December for board meeting and setting up 2022. And my whole thing was, guys, you have to get default alive. You have to get contribution margins to be in a certain band. You were, we are going to target this level of free cash flow generation this year. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And what's great is the entire team embraced it and we're marching towards that. But if they didn't and they're like, no, we're just going to grow at all costs again. Oh my God, I would be freaking out right now. Freeberg, what do you have to out. add to that as advice to founders who have not been through this before? I built my business, my uh, uh, Climate Corp. Uh, we raised a round in November of 2007. We raised $12.5 million and then the financial crisis hit in 2008. And um, I'd say two things were really important. Uh, number one was just keep building. <laughs> so if you're building a great business, it doesn't matter what the market perturbations are. Uh, you know, the, the market will value you at what they're going to value you at. And if you're a good business, there's going to be money available uh, to you. The second piece of advice is one that I know has been said over and over again, but you know, never raise at a valuation beyond you know what you're reasonably going to be able to kind of deliver returns on at some point in the future, because otherwise those nasty dynamics emerge. You know, you could raise money at some crazy high valuation. That's not always the best thing to do because then the expectation of the investors coming in at that valuation are they want to make three times that money or four times that money, and it pushes you to do something unhealthy like spend more than you otherwise would stretch for a bigger outcome and put your entire company at risk. So, you know, two things to me have always been just stay focused on building your business. Don't let, you know, kind of market conditions drive your decision making and second define is, um, what for you is the best practice of staying focused on your business, because that is a very general term. What is Freeberg, if you're going to say the th top three things of focused on your business tactically means I have a simple rubric for value creation in a business. You know, number one is can you make a product? Number two is do people want to buy your product? Number three is can you make a positive gross margin selling that product to those people? Number four is can you make a return on the marketing dollars you have to spend to generate that gross profit? Meaning, you know, can LTV exceed CAC? And number five is can you scale the amount of money you deploy to grow your business such that as you grow, the return goes up, not down? If those are the five kind of things you can accomplish in that order, you can build the next Google. And so, and then the sixth thing is, can you be a platform, which is mean, meaning, can you transition to being a multi-product company that gets leverage out of the, the user base or the technology that you've built? Got it. And so, you know, if you can think about- Multiple revenue streams, more redundancy. Multiple revenue streams using the same customer base or multiple products or, you know, whatever. Um, and so if you can achieve those six things um, in that order, 
every step of the way, every increment you can make across that spectrum drives significant value as a business. Ultimately, what the multiple on your business will be is purely going to be a function of what else is going on in the world, things that you cannot control. And so if you're driving your decisions about building your business using that first rubric, good for you, you're going to succeed, you're going to have money available to you. Awesome. If you're driving your decisions based on what the market is telling you to do and what the market is saying is available to you and money and all that sort of stuff, you know, you're setting yourself up to basically be, you know, blown but are, out are you also saying to be independent of, of valuation? Yeah, I, I'm always of the opinion that you shouldn't raise money beyond your um, into a valuation that you're not comfortable saying in different market conditions or what have you, I can return multiple. Well, I don't think any founder has ever, you know, most of these founders were not around in 2000. And they were 2008. Them, or two, but even 2008 was less important in yeah. my mind, because yeah. it was it was it was fast. And again, we had government stimulus. So you know, like, I think 2008 was an aberrational moment. I was I was in the middle, you know, inside of Facebook when and I was like, what the hell is going on here? The government's going to step in. And you know, with tar printing a trillion dollars, or whatever it was, your, it didn't affect you guys. It didn't affect us at all. Yeah, but you were the most powerful company or no, 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 not at that at time, time. Not in 2008. Well, we were I not mean, in you guys were surging and we had were a not. lot of cash, right? No, no, I but we were profitable. We were, uh, here's the thing with that people don't realize with Facebook. Google was profitable from day one too. Yep. We, we were yeah. always default alive. I want every single person listening to this uh, to understand this. Okay. We sold poker ads for party poker in big banner ads on Facebook and we made money. Yeah. You got the bag. You got yourself we independent. We were profitable. Okay. So I don't buy this argument. That argument of unprofitable growth is a vestige of fund dynamics and VCs who want to raise larger and larger f funds to line their pockets with fees. It's a function of what I mentioned before, which is if you can um, think about the context of a portfolio of those bets, it makes sense. But if you think about your business, it doesn't make sense. In 2000, that didn't make sense. You could not run an unprofitable growth business. The money would not have been there. Right. And the real reason is that was a, a market check, meaning you had people reallocating capital because risk rates were different. You know, you could put money at 6% in the, in the US 10 year bonds. Now, obviously, you can't do that today. So maybe this cycle is just the new normal. And so, you know, maybe you can always be default debt and be able to raise money because the incentives exist. But I wonder when that stops. And so I don't know. Google was an incredibly cash efficient business. I think they raised under 50 million as a private company. Well, the, they they never used any of it because Google, the first, the first thing Google did is they did a massive search syndication deal with AOL that paid them hundreds of millions of dollars. And that funded the business. If you can sell ahead of your customers in terms of delivering the service or the product to them, you've got the most beautiful business in the world. That's the definition of bootstrapping. Google, even though they raised venture capital, effectively bootstrap the business by getting customers to prepay. Like Elon incredible. getting people to prepay for cars. I wrote this in my annual letter like t two years ago, but Facebook, Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon raised collectively less than $250 million. Yeah. I mean, what? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I agree with what, a, a, a lot of what you guys have said. Um, I mean, so I agree with Freeberg that recessions or downturns are actually great times to build startups because innovation doesn't stop. And, you know, so PayPal was predominantly built after the dot-com crash. Uh, Yammer was prominently built after the 2008 sort of Great Recession. So it's absolutely doable. And some things actually get easier in a downturn. There's like way fewer startups getting funded. And so like talent gets easier to recruit. So, you know, things loosen up in, you know, in terms of the company building side. The only thing that really gets harder in a downturn is fundraising, right? This is, and, and by the way, I think it's a good practice for founders not to care what happens in the public markets, the NASDAQ, early stage founders, right? Because the only time that really touches you is when you need to access the capital markets, right? And then you will be subject to the downstream impact on VCs of what's happening in the market. So, so the only thing that really gets harder is fundraising. And this is where I think Chamas advice comes in. I, I personally think that trying to achieve default alive status is too high a bar. I mean, it's a wonderful thing if you can do it. I mean, Facebook did it. Google did it. The very best companies did it. But I know very few SaaS companies that could continue to grow if they had to be cash flow positive, I mean, at an early stage. So you know, the metric I use is burn multiple. I wrote a blog about this once. Um, it's basically just how much are you burning for every dollar of net new ARR you're adding? So in other words, like if you're burning a million dollars you know, over whatever period of time, a month, quarter, a year to add a million dollars of net new ARR, that's actually pretty good. So a burn multiple... One. 
of like one or less is amazing. I'd say even up to two is good. So in other words, like if a SaaS company can say add 10 million of net new ARR in a year and burn 20, I think VCs will fund that all day long, even in a recession. Because you have a two-year payback. Yes. But when you start getting to burn multiples of three, four, five, six and up, that's when like VCs are going to go, wrong. wait a second. Yeah. You're that growth not is efficient, cost- right? You're not efficient. It's not just efficient, but it starts to raise questions about your product market fit because you're effectively spending too much money to grow. So like, why is a growth that hard, right? No like, market pull. Yeah, no market. Yeah, pull. exactly. No market pull. I think it's a good way of putting it. So I do think you have to sharp, like in a downturn or in choppy waters, you have to sharpen the pencil, get more efficient about your burn, look at your burn multiple. And then I think, you know, if you have the opportunity to top off your war chest, like that's smart, you know, and don't wait too long. And be frugal. I mean, God, the amount of like crazy spending I'm seeing in some startups and unnecessary spending. If you're spending something and it's not going into product, it's not going into marketing, you know, it's not going into sales and it's not, you know, just you really have to ask yourself, why am I spending money on going to this conference, going to that conference on this office space? Like really be frugal. I know that it's when you have all this money sloshing around, you're looking for things to spend it on, but stay focused. Like the old okay. summit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't spend 7,500 on that unless you've got tons of cash laying around. <laughs> Uh, and we will be getting back to the people who applied. We're going to go through and somebody's going to approve you. I mean, let's add, let's add one other thing to this, which yes. is you're right that like most founders have never even seen a downturn because the last big one was a great recession of 2008, 2009. So how many founders were even around back then? No, the but most, the most real, the real one was 2000. That's right. No, that, was the big, that was the big crash. It, it froze. I would say it froze to that. 2008 was what, like 12 to 18 months of choppiness. And I would say a lot of companies couldn't raise money, had to do down rounds, had to do multiple liquidation preferences. It was gnarly on some cap tables during that period. And if you don't know what multiple liquidation preferences are, <laughs> ask your attorney. I, I understand, but there was no real market check. The market check was really in 2000. And you saw yeah. it was a multi-year slog. It was, and it was a bloodbath. You had to be default alive. And wealth alive. got vaporized. Yes. People where who, you had to be default yeah. alive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I would say a third of the startups went away in 2008. I don't think we're running into that again. So, you know, let's not create a Sequoia graveyard but kind of story could, here. But, but you could. Nobody business, knows is the point. Look, it's a pro it's a probability of getting your business funded, right? And and that's kind of lower. It's it's not like. But here's the thing: what I what I, what's shocking to me? It's like I don't understand why people think you can grow infinitely forever. It's just not true. Even the best businesses in the world, after fifteen or twenty years, are barely growing at twenty percent. People Example. forecast Facebook and Google. Those are the two best businesses in the world. But isn't okay. the question what kind of growth VCs are willing to, to finance? No, what I'm saying is, if you know that your terminal growth rate, if you are one of the best companies ever created ever, is 20% in 20 years, it doesn't take a genius to do a line of best fit between now where you're at 100% in 20, and realize that at some point, if you don't figure out how to make money by selling what you're selling, there's a lot of people who will be smart enough after enough historical data has come through the transom or come over the past to realize that these things are not that fundable. And this is what's shocking to me. It's like that data is hiding in plain sight for anybody to look at. It doesn't make sense unless you believe that those, those growth rates of 40, 50, 60% are sustainable for 30 years or 40 years. We've seen zero examples. And you have to look at these canaries in the coal mine because if, if the best companies in the world can't do it, you're in, you have to really scratch your head here. Or ignore it. Whatever. Or ignore it. Whatever. That's, your <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Just wing yeah. it. Yeah, it'll just all work out. Don't, just, don't just worry about it. it. Don't, don't worry, worry about it. Don't worry. Just add like three Raise the features. Round. It's fine. One of those features will work and save the day. <laughs>